Hello everybody and we're back. The last time we finished off in this little room here, we found a brick in a wall which was loose and behind it was a secret door to stairs upstairs and a ring of invisibility. I'm unsure about that. I had a look at what a ring of invisibility does and it's actually an extremely good item and most of our party are still level one. I'm not sure about taking it. Just like the elven boots, which were a bit OP for a level 1 party. I think I'm going to downgrade this ring of invisibility. I think I'll instead just make it a precious ring worth 500 gold pieces. And that's about 100 XP for each of our party members. And that's a really good treasure. Yeah, so it's not a ring of invisibility. So where do we go next? Well, we have this door here and we'll have Liz listen to it she doesn't hear anything now given the state of our party we're gonna have Alexi go first this is his crusade and we're along helping him it's an odd relation to have with the retainer Ben has five hit points Donard is gonna cast his cure light wounds that he does very well and Ben is back up to 8. Donard is on 10, Alexi's on 13, and Alexi has by far the best AC. So he's going to go into this room first, and what on earth is in here, but we have some skeletons. Four of them? Okay. Right. The undead here are used as corridor guards, sometimes if cells get very crowded. At the present time, they have orders only to stay here and attack anyone including the PCs, of course, who enters, other than the evil cleric who controls them. Note that the door to this chamber does not have a metal grill and is unlocked. So Alexi's in first, followed by Donard, Ben, and then Liz and Sylvia, and Malin. Right. Let's see if any of us were surprised. And we surprised them. Excellent. So, let us roll for the first round of AC. And we have Alexi. And he throws an 11 plus 2 is a 13. Hit a hit. AC 7. And he does full damage. That's one dead. Then we have Ben. Who with his magic sword plus 3 does 6 damage. That's another one dead. Oh, I should have done missile first. Well... No, I'm going to make the excuse that not everybody can pile into this room. So if the skeletons are there, and our fighters are here, Sylvia and Liz, well, they aren't going to get much of a shot in this surprise round. So Donard, instead of turning them, thinks he's going to have a bash. And he misses. I should have turned them. Right, round one. And it's mutual. It would be. There's two of them left. They never get a morale check. Let's do them first. One's on Alexi. And that's a 15. And that hits AC3. Not good enough. One's on Ben. And that's an 11. Nope. Not good enough. Our turn. We'll do missile first. Sylvia misses. Liz misses. Alexi hits completely cream. Well, you don't cream a skeleton. There's no flesh on them to cream. You shatter them. And Ben misses. And Donard. Hits. 3 plus 1 is 14. Yes, that's easy hit. 3 damage. 4 dead skeletons. And nothing else. But they do have short swords. We'll remember that. So that room is done. And so we're back onto this room. And in this room are more prisoners. We look through the doors. And we see these rooms, despite only being 20 foot square, are absolutely crammed with prisoners. There's 20 in this little one. 
17 in this one, 14 in this one, and 12 in this one. To say they're distressed would be put in it mildly. These are just villagers from Fort Doom, well townsfolk. Of course when they see us they start clamouring. It's up to us to tell them to be quiet. There are a few sensible ones amongst them who immediately start telling the rest to be quiet and they all calm down. What do we say? Well, it's Alexi who steps up and says we're going to get you out of here, but hold tight. We have to get rid of the jailers. Is there any advice? They don't have any advice. They're really quite useless in this situation. So we go north and we find ourselves at this T-junction and we can either go left or right. We see a dead end here. So it's always good to check out a dead end first. And there's a door. Now we listen at the door. And Liz hears nothing. So we open the door. Is it locked? No, the door isn't locked. Inside here, chained against the wall, is an ogre. Now the ogre is extremely angry and starts speaking in ogre. Now I did work out Malin's languages and one of them is orcish. Let's do a reaction roll. Oh, it's 2d6. And we throw 9. That's good, he's possibly friendly. So when seeing us, he calms down a bit. There's a good chance he thinks we might be here to bring him food. Malin at least tries some orcish to see if that works. And indeed it does. And he just says something banal like, Hello? And the ogre stops because he's not used to being spoken to by humans. What's his second reaction? A six. And that's friendly. Oh good. So immediately he stops shaking. He asks for food in Orcish. Malin takes out some rations. The ogre can't eat them because his hands are manacled to the walls. Malin holds some up to his mouth. The ogre leans forward, takes a bite and swallows it. He doesn't say thank you. Ogres don't have nice manners. They're not brought up properly, but at least it calms them down. And Malin says in Orcish, we can get you out of here. And that seems to pacify the ogre. So yes, yeah, so Malin tells him to wait. Okay, and the others, of course, want to know what's going on. It's up to Malin to translate what's going on. Alexi says quite wisely, we could probably use this big brute to help us. That's what Malin asks, will you help us? The ogre says, maybe, but me want out of here. In ogre speak. Oh, and actually, I didn't realise here, but it says in the manual to add two to any reaction rolls. So our nine would have been an eleven. Oh, well, we would have got the same result. We're going to make a trade with this ogre. We're going to say, we'll come back for you and give you more food on the promise that you help us. The ogre doesn't really understand what that means, but he is certainly a lot calmer than he used to be. In order to show him that we mean well, we're going to leave this cell door open and go back here and we're faced with more prisoners in this cell and a door there there's nothing special about these prisoners there's two of them more townsfolk we'll listen at this door Sylvia can listen and she hears well, she hears the general clamour of prisoners in cells talking. So we open the door and we're faced with another long corridor. And a room immediately to our left, which is another prison cell. A door to our right. So we're going to listen at that door. And we hear nothing. Alexi opens it. What are we opening all these doors for? We're here to try and find a way up. Obviously we now have a mission to rescue these prisoners. And then, yeah, we're here to clear the place of guards. Open this door here. And inside we have five orcs. I think they're the only people who can speak to the ogre. A group of orcs, given the unwanted job of being jailers, live and squabble here. At any time, three of them are awake, while two are asleep. They wear the black jerkins with the black eagle barony badge on them and use swords. Their leader has eight HP. If he is killed, the morale for this group drops to six. 
the door to this room is unlocked. So there's three awake, three asleep. Who surprises who? And it's mutual surprise, so there is no surprise. Let's roll for initiative. We get initiative. Magic first. Five enemies, doing a lot of damage. Malin casts sleep. Let's see how many fall asleep. They only have one hit, hit, hit dice each. And that's nine. All of them fall asleep. So what do we do? Well, I think we do the usual thing. I think we kill four of them and tie one up for interrogation. Right, we slap it around the face till it wakes up. That takes some time as it is indeed a magic sleep. And we start interrogating him about the dungeon. What's his reaction? Eleven. Well, that's immediately friendly. No, that's possibly friendly. Roll again. Oops. And that's an eight. That's friendly. Okay, well, he's obviously not going to be too friendly. But we can interpret that as he is cooperative while being frightened. He tells us he doesn't really know much about upstairs. The orcs aren't really allowed upstairs. He will give us a bunch of keys on the proviso that we let him live. And one of the keys opens all the cell doors. Now that's a difficult decision. We can let him live, but we'll escort him to the trap door. We must go and flee. And we have a chance now to open up all these prison doors and let these prisoners out. The other set of keys opens all the manacles, which means we can release this ogre. Lastly, hidden under one of the five crude wooden beds is a small locked wooden chest. One of the leader's keys opens this. This contains treasure looted from prisoners, wages and other minor items. In total, the chest has 11 platinum pieces, 136 gold pieces, 144 electrum pieces, 324 silver pieces and 560 copper pieces and various trinkets jewellery and such worth 225 gold pieces a very nice haul and definitely well worth their effort there's some compensation for Liz for having to sleep in a sewer right. now what do we do next okay do we continue on and clean out this level or do we go back and rescue the people I'll take a break and think about it right we have a plan we questioned this orc a bit more. He was being cooperative and we asked him about the guards. And apparently the guard room is here at the end. We asked how many guards and he doesn't rightly know. It seems to vary between four, six. Who can tell? It seems that being put on guard duty in the dungeons is a form of punishment from the keep upstairs. So if you have incurred the wrath of the Baron by being lazy or foolish, then you're sort of put in detention here for a few days. So nobody really cares about you. They come down once a week with food and your wages. And that's about it. These guys have been here for a couple of days. So it will be a couple more days before anybody from the floor above bothers. Unless they run upstairs and tell them about us. We have got all we can out of this orc. We have to let him go. This really irritates Donard. Killing orcs is part of his mission. But nonetheless, Ben said we promised. Donard really can't see the value of keeping a promise with an orc. Ben takes him outside the cell and says, Where do you think this orc is going to go? Beneath us are these monster caverns. Either he will live there for a bit, or else he will try to exit via the sewers. We know people there who will, well, finish the job for us. Don't worry about this orc. He'll be taken care of. That kind of mollifies Donard a bit. And so what is our plan? Well, our plan is to is to recruit our ogre friend here. He kind of owes us for his freedom. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around the cells and tell everybody not to worry. We're not going to touch these cells. They're too close to the guardroom. But we're going to tell these people that their rescue will be imminent. We go to this cell here. We give the ogre some rations and he will agree to help us fight as negotiated through Malin speaking Orcish. You can actually recruit him. It says that the ogre will help the PCs for 1d3 combats in return for their releasing him and showing him a way out of the dungeons. So if we show him this trapdoor, that'll be good enough. 
and Ben just also mentions to Donor there's a good chance this ogre will encounter the orc. Considering the history they have, it's unlikely that orc will survive. But an interesting thing happens when we get to this cell here. This cell has four warriors in it, and one of them is a giant of a man. Now we have the keys to open these cells, but we aren't going to open them yet. We want to make sure that we've cleared out this level of the dungeon. Then we have to get these prisoners through the caves underneath here and into the sewers and up into, well, freedom. So we may encounter more monsters underneath in the caverns again. As I said, this cell here, we're told, has four large guys in it. They are not as frightened or anxious as everyone else. In fact, they say, let us join you, get us out of here and we'll help. Right, we don't have much equipment to offer them. There are some swords from the orcs here and some leather armour. Now, who amongst them will join us? Let's read up a bit. In cell 15F, there are four prisoners who are soldiers from Loon. Each is a first level fighter with strength 12 plus 1d6 with hit points 4 plus 1d4. I have rolled them up and they're of neutral alignment. They may join the PCs if the party really needs help and if suitable armour and weapons can be found for them. They are anxious to return to their families in Loon. They have names. Tybor, Imren, Thaddeus, Maridan, and they should receive a share of the treasure. Let's see which two of them will join. I'm going to roll a dice for orange for Tybor, green from Imran. Highest one, highest one joins us. So it's Tybor was the orange dice. Tybor joins us and not Imran. Imran wants to leave, but we've told him to hang on in. Next we have Thaddeus and a guy called Maridan. Orange for the Maridan, green for Thaddeus. And it's Maridan. So I'm going to have Tybor and Maridan join us. And I'm going to tell you something about Tybor. He has a strength of 18 and a hit points of 8. This guy is a beast. We let them out of the cells. And we go here. Give them the equipment from the orcs in room 22. Right, so that bumps up their armor class a bit. Leather armor is just armor class 7. I'm going to assume they have no dex bonuses. With his strength of 18, Tybor is one of the strongest men on the land of Mystara. And when he comes out of the cell, Ben looks up at him. This guy is six foot four and as wide as the cell door. Ben looks up at him and says, Holy, you must have been the tallest in your village. In fact, Ben's going to say something a bit more appropriate to the setting than holy something. He's going to say something like, By the gods, or for the love of Mistara. Something more fantasy-like. I think it should be mandatory in these games that when your characters are surprised or astonished, that they have to speak in fantasy. They have to say things like, Hydra's truth, is that for real? Or do my eyes deceive me? Tybor replies with, I am a wounded bear, put a sword in my hand and hear me roar. And Donard just sighs and thinks, your freedom really can't come soon enough. <laughs> I'm loving all this speak. Dad, if I think of all the years that I missed out on this, we now have two extra fighters. We have our ogre friend. We've got two fighters. And we're going to put our plan into action. And I have enlarged this here. To look like this. And I'm going to add Tybor. And Maridan as well. So our plan is to get this ogre to roar and thump his chest to get these guards to come out of here. This is the guard room. There are five guards and one guard sergeant. This is Alexei. This is Ben. This is Donard. They're going to ambush from here. Malin is, well, we're keeping him safe. And should all the guards come down here, Liz and Sylvia are going to shoot from behind. That's indeed what happens. Our ogre starts roaring and thumping his chest. The watch sergeant tells everybody, you go out there, sort that out, see what that beast is on about, and get those lazy orcs to shift their ass and sort it. 
so this one here this one here opens the doors they see the ogre at the other end and they realize this guy is out of his cell and he's unmanacled they call back to the others and say we need help here all of them do indeed rush forward to try and get this ogre but the watch sergeant stays behind our ambush works and the ogre will help for three rounds and he has 19 hit points and he's a 4 plus 1 monster let's run this combat let's see who has there is clearly no surprise let's see who has initiative and they get initiative so unfortunately our poor ogre wasn't really equipped for him and he has no weapons so he has to use his fists he's also got an AC of 5 2 can beat on him no actually we'll have 3 let's roll for 1 attack dice and that's a 9 that's a miss let's roll for number second one that's a 19 and the third one throws a 14 he hits and he does 2 damage our poor ogre friend is down to 11 right it's our turn and this is when Alexi comes out of this door here Donard comes out of this door here and we'll have Tybor Liz and Sylvia okay and I think this hopefully will be enough this door is a bit too crowded for Ben to get a go he should have gone first in fact Ben will be on crossbow duty because he's actually really weak no actually he's got his hit points back up to it right Argo let's do the ogre he's on fists and he's going to attack this one in front of us. That's a 17. Given his level, that easily hits. And he does 2 plus 2 damage to guy number 1. He's from 8 to 4 hit its points. Then we'll do Donard, who's on this guy. Whoops, sorry. Missile first. Liz and Sylvia are both going to shoot this one. Liz, seven, misses, Sylvia, 11, plus one for short range is 12, hits AC seven, that's a miss, Ben is going to fire rather nicely over Tonard's shoulder, he's a couple of inches taller, into this one here, and he misses as well, now we have melee, Donard, on the guy number three oh, throws a double one Alexei throws a good 18 hits does his three plus two damage on number four number four is dead then we have Tybor this goliath of a man Is on this guy here and clearly he has been holed up in that cell for too long and that sword arm, arm of his has got cramp oh well that's round one over and done with round two let's see who has initiative and it's mutual we'll do the enemies first and this guy comes out of here He's heard fighting and he is on to Sylvia. I'm personally not happy with that. But Sylvia has an AC of 3 and he is level 2. Let's see what he does. And he misses. Right, it's missile duty. Ben. We'll do Ben first. Oh no, sorry. We're still on all the enemies. Right. This guy here is on the ogre still. And 
12 hits AC 11 for him. That's a miss. This guy misses. This guy's on Donard. 10 misses. That's an AC 8. Yeah. And this guy turns and wallops Thaddeus. Who only has AC 7. And he hits this big dolt of a guy. No, they only do 1d6 damage. For two points. So big Thaddeus is down to six. Sorry, Tybor. Right. Our turn. Now Sylvia is on bows. We're going to do missile first. And I'll do Ben because that's the easiest. He's on this person. And he hits number three for three hit points of damage. Right, now Sylvia is in trouble because this guy's on her. She's on bows. Her turn is to switch to melee. Liz understandably runs. Taking her place is this guy Maridan. I'm going to leave Liz there. She bolted. That's her turn. So we don't have any more missile. Right. Let's do melee. Let's do Donard. Who misses? Let's do Alexei. He's on number two here. And he does excellent hit. Okay damage. Five points. That guy's from eight to three. Let's do Tybor. He, yes, that first swing of his was a bit rusty. It didn't take long for him to get back into the swing of things. And that guy there is dead. Now we have Maradon, who's on the boss sergeant. And he does an excellent hit. He gets plus one to damage. 3 plus 1 is 4. This sergeant is from 13 health to 9. Our ogre friend hasn't had a go. He's going to go for this one here. And 7 at his level is AC6. That hits. And he does a 1 plus 2 damage is 3. That guy's still alive. Alright. That was round two, round three. It's mutual again. Let's do them. Let's do this watch sergeant who's on Sylvia. She's in her melee sword and shield mode. Oh, and he misses badly. It's, there's three of these guys left. This one has turned onto Alexei and misses. This one is on the ogre and misses. And this one is on Donard. I'm going to project he hits. Nine. No, that's a miss. So all three of them miss. Right. Plus their sergeant. Our turn. Missile. Liz gets a bit more line of sight and shoots this one and she hits and does three damage he's down to six Ben shoots this one and he hits and does three damage and that is this one dead then we have melee Let's have our ogre friend on this guy. And that's an easy hit for six damage. More than enough to kill him. He only had one HP left. Right. 
Let's have Alexei onto this one. Seven plus two is nine. Not good enough. Unfortunately, Donard can't get in there. He's sort of in the doorway. Mm. Right. And Thaddeus is going to move up here to help kill the watch sergeant. We haven't done Maradon yet. Oh yes, excellent strike. Not the best hit. That's still 2 damage. The sergeant is down to 4 HP. Everybody has gone. Malin's here, cheering them on. Go boys, go! Round 4. And we get initiative. Cool. Now the ogre has done his duty. So he's going to back off and lick his wounds. Alexi's going to come there. Donard's going to come there. Ben's going to come there. Missile first. Liz is on the sergeant. 10 plus 2 is 12. Hits AC7. Not good enough. Ben is going to try and shoot this one. He does. He does one point of damage. This guy only had three HPs down to two. Right, we have melee. We'll have Donard see if he can hit this one. And he does. And he takes that one out. We're going to have Sylvia. Let's see if she can take out the sergeant. He's got quite a high AC. Eleven. She gets no bonuses for anything. So she misses Maridan misses Thaddeus misses right now it's the sergeant's go and ten plus one is eleven. Eleven on a level two hits AC six. Sylvia has AC3, she's safe. Right. Round 5. There's only this guy left. And it's mutual. We'll do his swing on Sylvia. 9 plus 1 is 10. Nope. Not good enough. We'll do... Liz can't get a shot in. There's just too many people around there. So we're on melee. We'll do Sylvia. Misses. We'll do Mar Maradon. 14. No plus one is 15. It's AC4. Not good enough. And we'll do Big Tybor. 14 plus three is 17. That hits AC2. 7 plus 3 damage is 10 and Tybor takes out his years of frustration on that sergeant and just quite literally sticks a sword into his head and his head falls apart left and right and he drops to the ground. And that fight is over. Now we need to clear up and search these bodies for anything useful including armour, weapons and other such things. We back after we've cleaned up Right, we've just won this fight with the last of the jailers and guards on this floor. We've looted these two rooms. This room here, number 23, was a storeroom and has many useful things in it for us, such as torches, ropes, sacks and six flasks of oil. We'll take most of that. We won't take all the rope. There's quite a lot. There's 500 feet worth in all and 150 torches. We'll take six. We loot the bodies and we find some decent treasure, the usual gold and electron pieces. We loot the guard room and there's a chest in there and that has more treasure in it. And also we have armour for our new two heroes who are Tiber and Maradon. I kept calling Tiber Thaddeus last time. That was his friend along with his other friend Imran. They're still in their cells. The way that fight played out was described in the manual as a suggestion. So the ogre will fight for you if you release him 
and are good to him. It's on the proviso that when it's over, he can be shown out. So we show him to the trapdoor into the dungeons below. He says goodbye in Orcish to Malin. Me, thank you. It's kind of, isn't, isn't, it's not how ogres speak. And he heads off into the monster caverns below. One wonders if he will find the orc jailer that we let go, and will he give his jailer his just desserts? We all gather around the treasure, and we loot the bodies for chainmail and shields, so our two new heroes have some extra armour, and Malin is itching to try his wand of magic detection on the ring that they found. He has heard of magic rings, like rings of invisibility, and this might be his first one. So he uses the wand, and to his disappointment, the ring doesn't glow. But the chainmail on Ben and Sylvia glows, so they discover that magic chainmail. And also the shield that they picked off the sergeant also glows. That's currently in the hands of Tiber, and he graciously hands it to Donard, and says, You are my saviour from captivity. I owe you this. Because Tiber speaks both common and fantasy. Anyway, Donard grits his teeth at the speech, but graciously takes the shield. It's a shield plus one, so his armor class is up to four. All my three main warriors, even though they're glad that the chainmail is magical, it's still not as good as plate mail, and they can't wait to get back into that. I'm going to throw these dice for each of my party. If anyone gets a six with an intelligence bonus, they, they come off with a clever idea. And that is Donard. And Malin as well, he gets a 5 plus 3. And both of them notice that all the guards are wearing cloaks. And the cloaks with a badge that has an insignia of Fort Doom on it. They decide if we take these cloaks and put them on as a disguise. This excites Big Tiber, the big dolt. He laughs and says, Ha ha, tis good to have brains, but might is better. And he flexes his muscles and leans forward for Malin to feel how strong they are. Malin looks around awkwardly at the others because he doesn't really know what to do with this. But anyway, yeah, he squeezes Tiber's big muscles and the big guy laughs. Miranda, his cellmate, whispers to Donard, I was in a cell with him for six months. So what happens next? Well, there are all of these prisoners to rescue. We have about a couple of days before anybody from upstairs notices that the guards and jailers have been killed and there's a close to 80 prisoners in total. We won't be able to take them all so we'll have to do it in several shifts and also these prisoners have absolutely no weapons or anything and these caverns below are filled with monsters so we are going to have to escort them from the trapdoor to the sewers we also realise, should any more prisoners be thrown into these cells and thrown into the dungeons, that they will become prey to the monsters. So this gives us a motivation to clear out all of the rest of this monster cavern. And that is what we will be doing next time. We will be escorting the prisoners, probably in about three shifts, and maybe with a night's rest in between, we will clear out these caverns. We will also have to keep checking for wandering monsters. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I will see you then.